to say to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> the voice of God calls us to awaken him. How will he find us when he comes? Awake and ready. And when he asks us to dedicate our lives ever more perfectly, how will he find us? Awake and ready. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Friend, beloved God, Friend, beloved God. Great masters of self-realization. Great masters of self-realization. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Babaji Krishna. Babaji Krishna. Lahiri Mahashaya. Lahiri Mahashaya. Swami Sri Yukteswar. Swami Sri Yukteswar. And Paramhansa Yogananda. And Paramhansa Yogananda. Saints of all religions. Saints of all religions. Humbly we bow before you. Humbly we bow before you. Beloved Lord. Beloved Lord. Awaken within us, Awaken within us the, power of peace and calmness, the power of peace and calmness that we carry your vibration, that we carry your, vibration your, love, your love, your wisdom, your, wisdom, your, joy, your joy into every moment of our lives. Into every moment of our lives. Home, Home, peace. peace. Amen. Please be seated. I heard your flute high on a cloud. Your call I can't resist. Oh, let us come and play with you. We'll scatter music with the dew and sound the morning. I've heard you piping on a hill All else I've set aside Oh, let us dance the mountain peaks We'll skip with breezes on the creeks And soar the valleys wide called me to the fields now I've no place to live don't send me back rejected friend whatever I call mine must end all that I am I give I hear your call in every tree, in every flower and stream, and sweetest melody of all, a song that heaven's joy recalls here in my heart, you see. For just Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How is everybody today? Good morning, everybody. Yay. 
Okay, for those of you who don't know us, my name is Nayaswami Gangamata. This is my husband, Nayaswami Daiva. It's our joy to be here. And happy Father's Day to all those who are fathers on this, uh, who are fathers to, ch to children on this earthly plane, but also all those who act on behalf of fathers, stepfathers, uh, godfathers, um, all those that, that play that role. So happy day to all of you. I was looking up a joke on father for fathers, and uh, don't worry, this is under jokes you can tell in church, so, <laughs> so I think we'll be safe. <laughs> there, were, there were three boys that were in the schoolyard bragging about their fathers. The first boy says, my dad scribbles a few words on a piece of paper. He calls it a poem, and they give him $50. The second boy says, that's nothing. My dad scribbles a few words on a piece of paper. He calls it a song. They give him $100. The third boy says, I got you both beat. My dad scribbles a few words on a piece of paper, and he calls it a sermon. And it takes eight people to collect all the money. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's really good. And then, I was having a lot of fun on the internet this morning. <laughs> that's it. Um, do many of you know the origins of Father's Day? I didn't know this. Um, it was while listening to a Mother's Day sermon in 1909 that the idea of Father's Day suddenly struck Spokane, Washington resident Sonora Dodd. She wanted to honor her own father, William Smart, who was well deserving of a special day as a widowed farmer left alone to raise his six kids single-handedly. A short year later, residents embraced the idea so warmly that by June 19, 1910, the first Father's Day celebration was proclaimed in Spokane because it was the month of Dodd's father's birth. Decades later, the first presidential proclamation honoring fathers was issued in 1966 when President Johnson designated the third Sunday in June as Father's Day. Father's Day in America has been officially celebrated annually since 1972 when President Nixon signed the public law that made it permanent. Due to her efforts, Sonora Dodd is now known as the mother of Father's Day. <laughs> Very cute. So I guess we better read from whispers. <laughs> For those of you who don't know this, this is Yogananda's book of prayer demands and poems. He said, if you want to know me, read my whispers. And this is number 167. Teach us to consider no work more important than thy work. O Spirit, as no work is possible without borrowing from thee the power to perform it, so teach us to consider no work greater than thy spiritual work. Teach us to feel that since no duty is possible without thee, so no duty is more important than our duty to thee. And teach us to love thee above everything, for we cannot live or love anything or anybody without thy life, thy love. So the words of Jesus this morning, that the poor you have always with you, but you don't always have me with you, it's a strong statement, and it's a challenge for us to find the deeper truth. And what our reading was reminding us that the most important goal that we have is to deepen our attunement, is to find God. And then yet, service is very important. And I want to share two reasons why I think service is very important. The first one, our topic is how do devotees rise? Not too long ago, I was going through a difficult time and I was talking to a dear friend and I said, I don't know how to get out of this. And she said three words. She said, serve, serve, serve. <laughs> and it's really true because what happens when we serve, we expand beyond uh, what we can call our little selves. We think of somebody else. We're doing something for somebody else. And that's where community and that's where Ananda really comes in and helps. And Yogananda has, has a saying that environment is stronger than willpower. In communities, again, in places like Ananda here, 
There's endless opportunities to serve. Here in Portland, we have many facets to our work. We have our Temple and Teaching Center. And in the announcements, you'll be hearing about a special Save-A-Day that'll be coming up here. But we have our school, we have our community, we have um, our senior care facility, we have our retreat center in town. There's endless opportunities to serve, endless opportunities to get outside of ourselves and expand beyond who we really are. I mean, it's difficult to do that. It's difficult to rise when we fall. What is the tendency? I found myself wanting to borrow and hide away. And by service, you can't hide. You know, you just can't. You're out there. You're, you're working with everybody. You're, you're, you know, putting yourself out there. You know, the little self begins to break away. And then you get to feel, you get to step in something so much deeper. We're reminded, we remind each other, which is so beautiful when you're part of a community, that we're not alone, that God is with us. I love the prayer of the man. You know, he said, dear God, so far so good. I haven't hurt anybody's feelings. I haven't made any mistakes. But in a few minutes, I'm going to be getting out of bed. And I'm going to, I'm going to need a lot more help. And that's what community does for us. It helps us to remember. And then even when we fall, like to have somebody to turn and say, what do I do now? Help me. How can I get through this? Even when we fall, we're reminded what? That the masters and that God is always with us. I love the story of the man named Jack who was walking along a trail and then he finds himself, he just falls off the trail and he falls several hundred feet, but he manages to gra grab a branch which stops his fall. And he can see that you know, he would have continued to fall for quite many more hundreds of feet. And he looks up and he can't get to the top. And he's just praying really hard. He's yelling, is anybody up there? Is anybody up there? Doesn't hear anything and he finally hears a voice. Jack, Jack, are you there? He goes, yes, yes, I'm here. Who is it? Who's, who's up there? And then he hears the voice say, Jack, it's the Lord, Jack. He's like, the Lord? You mean God? Yes, Jack, it's the Lord. And then Jack starts saying, well, help me, help me, help me get out of this. I'll do anything. I'll, I'll be a good person. I'll stop sinning. I'll, and he's, you know, the litany goes on. And then God says, whoa, 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 Jack, take it easy on the promises. Wait a minute, you know, he says, you know, do you trust me? And Jack says, yes, of course I trust you. Will you do whatever I tell you? And Jack says, of course. And then God says, well, will you let go of the branch? And Jack's like, I don't know. He's like, the Lord's like, will you let go of the branch? And then finally, there's a long pause, and then you hear Jack yelling again, is there anybody else up there? <laughs> Help. <laughs> <laughs> Where, that's what community does for us. It reminds us that God and the masters are with us. We're reminded the, the beautiful equation of the spiritual path. It's 25% our effort. We have to show up. We have to give it our all. But then the other 25% is the guru's grace. And then the other 50% is God's love. Those are really good odds for any, any baseball, football, volleyball team that we can see up here. Really good odds. The second point in why service is still important, if we can serve with the right attitude and consciousness, we can deepen our attunement with God. And then again, back to our reading. What our reading was saying is touching back to that center of spirit. Yogananda says, center everywhere, circumference nowhere. We always talk about on our path, this is a path of meditation, and service. It's not just meditation, 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 or just service, service, service. Meditation and service. Once we find that center, once we find that center, what will we find? That calmness, joy, peace, all those qualities, then we can share those in our service. Center everywhere, circumference nowhere. When we, when we strengthen our attitude, our consciousness, when we get that right, we deepen our attunement with spirit. And then everything we touch, when we fall, when we rise, God's joy is always there. That calmness is always there. Though the winds of difficulties howl around me, God's peace, God's joy is always there. So I think I'll let Daiva will also share today on this beloved, blessed Father's Day. God bless you all. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> the mother of Father's Day. That was very cute. <laughs> We never know what the other person's going to say, so it's always a little bit interesting. <laughs>
Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see you all. <clears throat> I'm not sure where to go from here. Uh, it's a beautiful talk. Um, perhaps we talk a little bit about um, things that cause us to fall. It was very interesting. We were down in Palo Alto visiting our daughter and her husband this last weekend. And 25 years ago, um, I was in Palo Alto with Erica and really in training. Uh, for about two and a half years, Asha and David Praver um, have served many hundreds or thousands of people now across the decades and becoming aware of God's presence and how to tune in more deeply. And here we are 25 years later. We've been 10 years the spiritual directors up here. So um, it was the first time we had been invited to speak in the temple down there. And wouldn't you know it, the topic was how devotees fall. <laughs> Found that very amusing. How devotees fall is really simple. It's through self-involvement. It's through increasing affirmation of our identity as this, our personality, our bodies, our minds, our thoughts, our actions, our roles. And the more we emphasize those things, the more separate we become from the great flow of life. And so if we want to rise, we have to cut away that ballast. We have to let go of those things. And so as Ganga Mata spoke, service is one of the greatest vehicles for that because if you're truly serving a greater cause, if you're serving something selflessly, you're being selfless. You've forgotten those identities and all that's left, all that's left. And Laurelwood, Ananda Laurelwood is such a great venue for this for people who come out there and actually get involved in the programs. All that's left is just the movement of energy and consciousness that is spirit. And the more we tune into that, the more we feel that flowing through us, the freer we become. Now, there's a story of a, of a saint who was a potter. And potters would check the pots by going around and rapping on them. And so he, would, he just had this fun little habit. If he would go around when he was giving satsang or when things were happening, he'd just rap people on the head. And they'd kind of go, <laughs> but you know, mostly people took it. It was just the peculiarity of this one saint. But there was another saint in the area. And in the middle of one of his satsangs, um, the potter was coming along and rapping uh, this other guy's devotees, and, uh, which was a little bizarre. And um, the, this, the saint who was giving the satsang was just kind of watching us a little bit. But then this little potter saint walked up onto the dais and rapped him. And he thought, well, how dare you? And he got really flustered and upset and lost his calmness and peace. And the potter just looked at him and said, there's a crack in this pot. <laughs> <laughs> and the man was great enough to understand what was there. But, and so he went back to work on his spiritual practice and on his, on his understanding. If we are not yet liberated, there's a crack in the pot. There will be places where life will take us where we discover that we can no longer hang on to that sense of calmness and peace, that communion that's there. And all those moments are, is they are the mirror that helps us understand what's left to do. The job of these masters of God through these great saints, these great masters, their job is to come down, and they're coming in response to our call, to our love to our yearning for wholeness. And they come and their job is to guide our lives into those areas where we do not yet feel the presence of God. We all have, we all have places where we are supremely confident. We know that God exists within these terms. And usually, for many of us, it's in you know, the spring of our lives, our bodies are strong, our minds are alert, we're, you know, we're engaged in meaningful service, we've got a good job and we're married and we've got kids and uh, you know, all those things. They're easy self-definitions in a worldly sense. But those things are the trap as well as the blessing. It's wonderful to have those things happen through us. And we all have in, in our own way and in our own place and in our own timing. Great victories are 15 minutes of fame but they also become the trap and all those things because everything in this world is conditioned. Everything in this world comes and it, it flows and it ebbs. It goes away. If we only identify the presence of spirit through those conditions, we are stuck. 
And the other thing that's really interesting is every one of us is unique, both in um, the, the goodness, the, the full glory of our lives, but also in the peculiarities of the things that are not there. Because the very, the very definition of Maya, the very definition of creation, is that everything is only a part of the story. Only in God is everything complete. So everybody's got a crack in the pot. And we tend to emphasize, when we look at ourselves, when we think of ourselves, we tend to identify ourselves more and more. And again, this is how we fall more and more with those things that are incomplete or are missing or are not within the box of how we identify where God is. There's a story that Ganga Mata likes to tell, and I, it's very touching. It's about um, this woman who lived in a small village, and the small village was very poor, and they had, she had to haul water every day from the river um, several miles away back to her village. And because it was heavy and it was hard, she developed a system where she had, she had two pots. And she used to carry them like this, but she, she put a pole, she put them on a pole and put it across her shoulders so she could shoulder the, the weight more easily. But one of the pots had a crack in it. And the, and the pot was oh so sad because it couldn't, it, it couldn't do the same work as the other pot. And there was this prayer that went up from this, this cracked pot to God about, oh, the frailty of its life and its existence. And so there was a dream for this pot. And the pot, it, it, the, the pot felt the woman carrying them down, empty down to the river. And they were equal in that moment because there was no work being done. And then the scooping up of the water and the coming back and the leaking out along the way, um, and the inadequacy, and she would get there, and the one pot would be half empty. But then the, God showed that on the pathway to the river, on one side, there were all these flowers growing. And it was the side where the water leaked out on the way back. God uses us as we are to bring beauty and meaning. We think we know what the story's supposed to look like. We are so convinced that we know how it's supposed to be and if we can just get it just right. But God knows much better. And there are so many layers to the, the, the dance of life and the things that are happening. There are no mistakes. The karmas that you have, the way you're made, the cracks in your pot, if you learn to become calm, if you learn to become quiet inside in the presence of God, you will see the beauty that comes out of the expression of how you're made and the uniqueness of who you are with all its glories and with all its frailties. We have to learn to turn inside to feel the presence of spirit. We have Father's Day, and fathers are the, the male principle, I don't, I, which fathers and the concept of fathers really um, represents, is that aspect of spirit that is so completely selfless and so removed from um, the personal involvement that whatever needs to happen, they are willing to do at whatever cost. There's a male aspect of every one of our natures. And it's the part of us that's willing to put down. There's, the, fe the feminine aspect of spirit, the Divine Mother, that which is so intimate and so close and so warm and so caring and so personal, is an extraordinarily powerful aspect of spirit. And every one of us has that inside. Every one of us relates to that. But if that's the only part of spirit that gets celebrated or acknowledged, we get trapped in emotion, we get trapped in feeling, we get trapped in the dream. And the male aspect is that part which is beyond the dream, which is whole despite everything. And, you know, dads go off to war. Dads go out and protect. Dads create the space in which um, the family can be nourished. The family can have the intimate personal experience of life that's so intimate for them. 
there's a, there's a beautiful, this is a sweet book, it's Metaphysical Meditations um, by Paramahansa Yogananda, and they're just thoughts. Um, and I haven't, I, I used to, this was one of my central ones for many, many years, and I've mostly got it still in there, but I just want to make sure I don't drop any of the words or concepts. Wisdom's fire is burning. I am feeding the flame. If we want to feel the presence of God in freedom, in power, in calmness, we have to let go of the details of our lives. We have to accept the frailties, the glories, all the pieces equally, and then get past that. Wisdom's fire is burning. I am feeding the flame. No use sorrowing more. All perishable pleasures, all temporary aspirations, I am using as faggots to feed the eternal fire of knowledge. The old cherished logs of desire I had saved to fashion furnitures of pleasure, I cast into the hungry flames. Ah, oh, my myriad ambitions are crackling joyously at the touch of God's flame. My ancient home of passions, of possessions, of incarnations, of many kingdoms of my fancy, of many air castles of my dreams, all are being consumed by this fire of my own kindling. We have to light the fire ourselves. I am beholding this blaze, not with sadness, but with joy. For it has not only burned my home of matter, but all the sorrow-haunted buildings of my fancy. I am glad beyond the wealth of kings. I am king of myself, not a fancy enslaved king of possessions. I own nothing. I am the ruler of my own imperishable kingdom of peace. I am no longer a slave serving my fears of possible losses. I have nothing to lose. I am enthroned in perennial satisfaction. I am a king indeed. Feel for that sense of freedom. Feel for that, the, the father behind all things that would give us the awareness of joy, the awareness of love, the awareness of freedom and calmness and peace in the midst of whatever life brings. This world is in turmoil. This world is frantic. It's frenetic, and it's also frantic for wholeness. It's frantic for peace and calmness, for places of respite. The more we go into these places and offer ourselves in service and make ourselves available in that state, the more the light of God will shine into this world. Let's take a moment of silence. Oh, my God. 
days or years keep calling him keep calling him whether he replies or not keep calling him in the center of my heart I have a mystic throne for thee. The candles of my choice are dimly burning now in hope, awaiting thy coming. Though it be Keep calling him, keep calling him, whether he replies or not, keep calling him, even when there's no reply, never let your longing die. Remain persistent, undepressed, through dark and seeming silence. If in the midst of life, disease, and death, you play the dancer, yet keep calling him, you